Cardinal Sedano, who is uh, Pope John Paul's uh, Secretary of State of the Papacy, will preside at this funeral mass. apologize for the quality of the uh, audio coming from the stadium. We, uh, we are working on it. Uh, the facilities here are provided by Indian broadcasters, and there has been uh, a real overload on all facilities, um, not just in the city, but all technical facilities as well. Uh, there seems to be improvement. The presence of so many dignitaries at this service is itself a testimony to the extraordinary influence Mother Teresa had on the heart of the world. sound that we had hoped to be able to hear. Archbishop D'Souza is delivering a message not only in English but in Bengali as well. Father John Narana, who is with us here today. The people in, um, in Calcutta really though speak English primarily. Uh, for those of us who are Westerners and visiting here for the first time, it seems everywhere we go. But is there a sizable portion of the population that speaks only Bengali? Just go to the chapel yeah, and pray. especially in West Bengal, most of the people, uh, I mean, it's a state language. But at the same time, maybe the younger generation has picked up a little bit of Hindi, which is being taught in school, which is the national language. But the senior people, they did not follow Hindi so much because uh, Bengal is a very great love for their own language. So I think uh, they prefer their and so much so that uh, even English was taught once many times in our government schools, which was later on, they started only from class five onwards and not from the beginning. We want to go back to the funeral mass now. Uh, we've been hearing from Archbishop uh, Henry D'Souza. We've been having some audio difficulties. The body of Mother Teresa lying in state there in the stadium.
as Archbishop uh, Henry de Souza continues his uh, opening message for this funeral mass, and you look at some of the assembled dignitaries who have arrived from around the world, uh, Queen Sophia of Spain is there. We're having, as I say, intermittent difficulties with some of the facilities. tell you that um, Cardinal Sedano will uh, preside at this Mass today. Uh, we'll hear Lord have mercy and Gloria. Uh, we read from the Book of Wisdom, chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. Also hear from the New Testament, Romans 8, 31, 39, in Hindi, read by a layman. There will be an offertory procession organized by the Sisters of Mercy relating to different aspects of their ministry, which Mother Teresa started. And the offertory hymn will be sung in Hindi. and also the constituencies of Mother Teresa have come here from around the world. This is expected to last about 90 minutes altogether and then it will end with a laying of wreaths by a number of these dignitaries. Teresa came here originally as a school teacher, uh, as the principal of a girls' school, and had that epiphanous experience when she was traveling to where Darjeeling, as I remember, That's right. on a train trip. Fifty-one years ago this week, it was on September 10th, uh, 1947, that uh, she was going on the journey, and uh, she says it was a inspiration that she received from God that was just so powerful that if she didn't follow through in it, she would be going against her conscience. And uh, that was a radical step, 1947. And a lot of her early work was with, uh, with the least, the very least among us, the lepers, the people that you work with. That's right. She had um, a great concern for them because in 1947, in the early 50s, uh, there wasn't the medication that exists today, the multi-drug therapy and the Dapsun medication that can arrest the disease of leprosy. The people who contracted the disease, often it advanced the cause deformity, loss of members, blindness, open sores. Uh, since then, it has changed. But, uh, at that time, uh, that lent a cred new credibility to mother that she was going out touching receiving them, caring for them. Sean Callahan is also with us uh, from Catholic Relief Services. Young people uh, know who she is today. I mean, she had to compete with so many other powerful images in the world. They, they certainly do. I think uh, young people, probably more than the rest of us, are, are inspired by her. 
they're at the stage in their life where they can, uh, they're still idealistic, they still want to know what they can do to contribute to change the world. And when young people come up to me and say, the problem is so vast. Here in India, you have 250 million people living in, in poverty. That's the, the population of the United States. What can one person do? And all it took was you, for you to go to the mother house and see what one person could do. Uh, Mr. Callahan, uh, there has been a resurgence of faith in the Catholic Church, especially among the young, hasn't there? There certainly has. I, I think evidenced uh, by the great popularity of the youth events uh, that the Pope in the United States, uh, in Denver, and recently in, in France. And I think uh, Mother Teresa, the Pope, and, and several others have really demonstrated to the world that the youth are looking for morals. They want standards. They don't want cop-outs uh, from the rest of us who have maybe come from a generation where we rationalize and compromise. They want to know what is right and what is wrong. And they also, I think, see the inspiration of people who uh, walk the walk and talk the talk. Speaking of walk the walk and talk the talk, she also had a great sense of the vernacular in her own way. I mean, you know, she didn't speak in just pieties. I mean, this is a woman who could convey very directly exactly what she was thinking. That's right. Uh, often she would go up to a person and out after the greeting get right to the heart of the matter, <laughs> inviting them to help her, inviting them maybe to do something to change the, the plight of the poor. And uh, it usually worked. I remember uh, when there was a uh, great famine in Ethiopia, her concern was, how can I call the President of the United States to do something? And she did. She called them and said, can you do something to help our sisters in Ethiopia? Within 24 hours, aid was on the way. And even people that approached her, she was, on one of her visits to the United States was in New Mexico on one of the reservations, and a man who was uh, inebriated came up to her and said, Mother, I need some help. And she stopped, looked him in the eye, held him hand, and said, stop drinking. <laughs> I, uh, one of the quotes that I've always uh, liked uh, best of hers was she talked about uh, what was going on in the West, the part of the world in which we live. She said, many are dying for a piece of bread, but many more are dying for a little piece of love. Uh, she used to say that, that her mission was not only uh, to clothe people and to, to fill their stomachs, but really to, to fill an emptiness in their heart. And she said, here in a lot of the poor countries, the hearts don't need as much mending. It's more the economics. She said, in the West, the hearts need mending. My sisters are there to, to fill a little bit of that heart with some of the love and joy. I think Mother Teresa is difficult for us in the West to understand because her whole philosophy is a culture. It's a real culture of unconditional love. And sometimes she's been criticized for reaching out to people of all economic statures, but unconditional love means she doesn't judge anyone. She reaches out to all people that are in need. Father Narana, did the young people of India, this new generation, know who she was? Yeah, because uh, before I moved into Delhi, I was in a parish for five years. And uh, it's a predominantly Bengali area in the southern part of Calcutta. And I was, every day I would get about 10-15 uh, college boys, special college girls, who would come and ask, he said, no, we want to know about Christianity, we want to become Christians. I used to ask, why you want to become Christians? She said, no, we want to become Mother Teresa's sisters. Most of these people wanted to know Christianity just because of Mother Teresa. And I think she was extremely popular with the youth especially the college girls and uh, with the non-Christians also over here. She, all, she said so many things that were uh, uh, so lasting in uh, their impact. She talked about prayer. She'd say, I always begin in silence. It is in the silence of the heart that God speaks. Some people see Mother Teresa more for the social service that she makes a contribution to, to the people. But uh, equal to the time spent with the poor is her time spent in prayer. And uh, she saw herself as a contemplative in action. <laughs> she quoted as saying, the slum sister they call me, and I am glad to be just that for his love and glory. The Archbishop is now speaking in, in Bengali and uh, 
interestingly enough, Calcutta's other Nobel Prize winner was a great Nobel uh, author, uh, Rubindranath Tagore. And so the city is very proud of its heritage in the Bengali language. She won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979. Were you startled when she won? I wasn't startled. I was uh, pleasantly surprised, shall we say. It's not often that uh, someone of a particular religion um, and someone who's committed to their faith and also someone who um, at that point didn't have a strong political influence would be uh, recognized and nominated for such an award. Father Petrie, this business of beatification, there will be an enormous wave of uh, urgency about that. I would think around the world people will want uh, the papacy to get on with the business of canonizing her. And the church cannot ignore that uh, no. kind of popular appeal. Uh, there is a process, and that will have to be followed. But I think uh, the Holy Father, Pope John Paul, has made exceptions in the past. And uh, if need be, I think the process might allow for exceptions because I, I believe we'll see definite signs that will allow the canonization process to take place. Normally, uh, under normal circumstances, you have to have a five-year waiting period and then a review of two miracles. Uh, and then uh, the, uh, within the College of Cardinals, there has to be a vote and a review on the part of the, each member of the College of Cardinals. That's correct. So that just is hard to imagine any member of this College of Cardinals would say, I'm voting against her. That's right. <laughs> what is going to be more difficult is finding the devil's advocate. There has to be someone chosen to find out reasons why mothers should not be canonized. And that's part of the process. Who would want that job? That's not the straw anyone wants to draw. <laughs> Let's go back to the services now and see if we... Uh, that we have picked up and improved on the audio at all. With glory. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to yes, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I seen to my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, of all the angels and saints, and you, know, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading, which is taken from the Book of Wisdom, chapter 3, verses 1 to 9 reminds us that the virtuous are in the hands of God even when they are tested like gold in the furnace and passed through death. Those who are faithful would live with God forever in love. This passage from the Old Testament will be read in Bengali, the language of our state by Sister Claire of the Missionaries of Charity. Pahla part, jo prakya grand adhyay. Father Petri tells me that Sister Claire is one of the original sisters of the order of the Sisters of Mercy who joined uh, Mother Teresa here uh, shortly after the war, really after she had her epiphanous calling to this work in 1947. This is uh, Wisdom 319, if you'll bear with me as it's being read in Bengali, I will read it to you in English. The souls of the righteous are in the hands of God and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died and their departure was thought to be an addiction and they're going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace, for though in the sight of men they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his elect, and he watches over his holy one. This is the word of the Lord. Wisdom 3, verses 1 through 9. সামান্য দুঃখের পর তারা পাবে মহা আশীর্বাদ কারণ পরমেশ্বর তাদের যাচাই করে দেখেছেন তার আপনজন হবার উপযুক্ত তারা সদন পাত্রের আগুনে দেওয়া সোনার মতোই তাদের তিনি যাচাই করেছেন Father Petri, as she uh, completes the reading here, it seems to me that it is particularly apt, this selection. It certainly is. Uh, having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. That's a fair one-line summary of Mother Teresa and her place on this earth. Yes. Uh, Mother had the gift of fidelity, true to herself true to her call, her vocation, true to her service to the poor. There was never a change of heart in the 51 years since that first inspiration. Jara 
Sister Claire was one of her students at Loretto College, where she became a head, headmistress. At That's right. She was in charge of the Bengali section of them, and uh, Sister Claire is Bengali. Should be a response from the congregation now, thanks be to God, and then we'll have the responsorial psalm sung by the choir. to 35 and 37 to 39 taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans is the second reading which tells of the love of God for us made visible in Christ Jesus. Through many trials we triumph in love by the power of him who loves us. This passage from the New Testament of the Holy Bible will be read in Hindi, India's national language, by Mr. Matthias Barla. Again, we uh, ask your indulgence. Uh, this will be read in Hindi by Romeo all Raymond. Uh, I will read it in English on behalf of all of us here. If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave himself up for us all, will he not also give us all things with him? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Is it Christ Jesus who died? Yes, who was raised from the dead. Who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are all more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, not things present, nor things to come, nor powers, 
nor height, not depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Father Bill Petrie, who uh, is with us again, uh, a very apt choice. Uh, this is Romans 8, 31 through 39. She was uh, of one with the Lord, and she often expressed herself. In that. That's right. She united everything she did in union with Jesus. That was her constant prayer. We do it for Jesus. We do it for Jesus. Uh, if you traveled with her, and even to this day, the sisters, if they are on a train, if they're walking in the streets, they're praying. They have their rosary beads with them. The uh, liturgy, mass, every morning, an hour's meditation before the mass. In the evening, another hour of meditation in the chapel. Uh, it was all for Jesus, she said. And that, uh, that was her whole life, and I think that was her power. That's what came across. Father Narana, uh, are there many Catholic services that are conducted in Bengali in this nation? Many Bengali? Yes, many services, many masses that are celebrated in the Hindi language here. Yeah. Uh, in the city we have both, I mean, predominantly English, but Hindi, some parishes are Hindi, but there are few parishes in predominantly Bengali. Like St. Teresa's is purely about here, about 14,000 Catholics in one parish is a predominantly Bengali parish, then Auxilio. Fatima. These are purely Bengali service. And that's one thing which I felt very good was it was very difficult, especially priests and nuns who are, we are coming from other parts of India. But Mother Teresa sisters were there practically in every parish on a Sunday morning to help us out in a Bengali service. It was, which I found it was a very great contribution. We're now at the point of the service where we're hearing the gospel acclamation from the choir. Next we'll have a reading from Matthew. Muthi Rochito Mongol Shomacharir Ponchom Odhair Ekutris Teke Chechulish Pode Amra Shunte Pai Rubu Poromishor Halobasha Bunchito Chorum Obohilit Obohilito Der Mute Vijeke Milie Die Taken Pudharto Trishnarto We are uh, witnessing the uh, liturgical program the funeral mass of Mother Teresa here in Calcutta and Mataji State. Tadir Pruti Amraje Kurtopo Palun Kuri Bana Kure Thaki Ta Shobi Rupito Pokke Jishu Krishte Pruti Kure Thaki Tarun Ei Habi Amade Vichar Kora Habi Gospel from St. Matthew Chapter 5 Verses 31 to 46 will be read by Simon Cardinal Pimenta, Archbishop Emeritus of Mumbai. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, escorted by all the angels, then He will take His seat on His throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate men one from another, as the shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to him, will say to those on his right hand, Come, you whom my father has blessed, for take take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you made, him, made me welcome. Naked and you clothed me. Sick 
and you visited me. In prison, and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you did this to one of the least of these brethren of mine, you did it to me. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. His Excellency Angelo Cardinal Sodano, Vatican Secretary of State, and papal delegate at this Eucharistic celebration will now read the message from His Holiness Pope John Paul II. Vatican Air Rastriyo Shuchib Ebung Ei Dharmo Shabhai Pope Mohadoy Air Pratinidhi Cardinal Angelo Sodano Akon Punno Pita Pope Dithiyo John Paul Air Bani Pat Kure Shunabin अभी इस युखरित समारोह में धर्मपिता के प्रतिनिधि एवं राजकीय सचिव महामहिम कार्डिनल अंजलो सुदानो संत पिता जॉन पॉल द्वितीय का संदेश पढ़ेंगे। Dear brothers and sisters, distinguished authorities from India and from around the world, believe the missionaries of Christ. Missionaries of Charity. The hour has arrived for us to say a final farewell to the late Mother Teresa. We have come here from many corners of the world to demonstrate our affection and gratitude and render a fitting homage. From the cold beer, the unforgettable and dear mother continues to speak to us and seems to repeat the Lord's words, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Herein lies the heart of the gospel. The evangelical message of God's love for us Mother Teresa of Calcutta understood fully this gospel of love. She understood it with every fiber of her indomitable spirit and every ounce of energy of her frail body. She practiced it with all her heart and through the daily toil of her hands, crossing the frontiers of religious and ethnic differences, she had taught the world this lesson, it is more blessed to give than to receive. At the close of a century, which has known terrible extremes of darkness, the light of conscience has not been altogether extinguished. Holiness, goodness, kindness, love are still recognized when they appear on history's stage. The Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, has given voice to what so many people of every condition have seen in this woman of unshakable faith. Her extraordinary spiritual vision, her attentive and self-sacrificing love of God, in each person she met, her absolute respect 
for the value of every human life and our courage in facing so many challenges. His Holiness, who knew Mother Teresa so well, wishes this funeral ceremony to be a great prayer of gratitude to God for having given her to the Church and to the world. The story of Mother Teresa's life is no mere humanitarian exploit, as she would be the first to declare. It is a story of biblical faith. It can only be explained as a proclamation of Jesus Christ by loving and serving him in the distressing disguise of the poorest of the poor, recognizing in them the image and likeness of God. It has been said that Mother Teresa might have done more to fight the causes of poverty in the world. Mother Teresa was aware of this criticism. She would shrug as if saying, while you go and discussing causes and explanations, I will kneel beside the poorest of the poor and attend to their needs. The beggar, the leper, the victim of faith do not need discussions and theories. They need love. The hungry cannot wait for the rest of the world to come up with the perfect answer. They need effective solidarity. The dying, the handicapped, and the defenseless unborn, who are without a constituency in the utopian ideologies, which have been trying to model the perfect world, need a loving human presence and a caring hand. The spiritual legacy which Mother Teresa leaves us is all contained in those words of Jesus in the Gospel of this Mass, the Gospel of St. Matthew. Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. In silence and contemplation, in prayer for adoration before the tabernacle, she learned to, to see the true face of God in every suffering human being. In prayer, she discovered the essential truth which underlies the Church's social teaching and the religious and humanitarian work in every age and in every part of the world. Jesus Christ has wished to identify himself with every person, especially the poor, the sick and the needy. You did it to me. Dear brothers and sisters, Mother Teresa of Calcutta lit a flame of love, which her spiritual daughters and sons must be now must now carry forward. The world badly needs the light of that flame. The homage we are paying to the memory of this humble sister will be in vain if we believers and men and women of goodwill everywhere do not take up where she left off. The poor are still with us. The poor are still with us. And because they are the reflection of the crucified Son of God, they must be 
at the very heart of our personal concern, of political action, of religious commitment. Speaking at the Angelus prayer on Sunday last, the Holy Father recalled these other words of Mother Teresa. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. And the fruit of service is peace. Only when we learn to see others as our beloved brothers and sisters will humanity learn the ways of peace. Dear Mother Teresa, the consoling dogma of the communion of saints allows us to feel ever close to you. The entire Church thanks you for your luminous example and promises to make it our heritage. Today, on behalf of Pope John Paul II, who sent me here, I offer you a final earthly farewell. And in his name, I thank you for all that you have done for the poor of the world. They are favorites of Jesus. They are also the favorites of our Holy Father, his vicar on earth. It is in his name that I place in your coffin the flower of our deepest gratitude. Dear Mother Teresa, rest in peace. Dear Mother Teresa, pray for us. Amen. Christo Jagir, Titio Pag, Surukorar Age, Shobha Jatra Kure, or Kunye Asha Habe. Mother Teresa Kormo Jibonir, Bibino Protik, or Go Hishebe, Nibedon Kara Habe. Tar Shonghir, brother, Shaho Kurmi, Onath Shishu, sisters, Karagar Teke Mukto Nari, Kushtorogi. Protibundhi Manush, a Shobhajatrai, Protinidito Kurben Before we move into the second part of the Mass, the Liturgy of the Eucharist, we will have the Offertory Procession. Various symbols of the life of Mother Teresa, the brother, the co-worker, the orphan child, the sister, the woman released from jail, those suffering from leprosy and the handicapped will be represented. To each petition your response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. The prayers will be read by Sister Joan and Sister Hyacinth of the Missionaries of Charity. of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, offered by Brother Jeff, General Servant of the Missionaries of Charity Brothers. Lord, we present this picture of the Immaculate Heart of Mary because it was through her pleading that the Society of the Missionaries of Charity was born. We pray that the whole society, sisters, brothers, and fathers, may continue the work of Mother Teresa. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Light, presented by Mrs. Agarwal, a co-worker. Lord, we offer you this light of love, lit by Mother Teresa, to dispel the darkness of poverty, hatred, and division. We thank you, Lord, for the co-workers, volunteers, and benefactors who have given their hearts to love and their hands to serve until it hurts. May they continue to spread the radiance of your light. Let us pray to the Lord. Flowers presented by Daya, an orphan child. With these flowers, Lord, we offer you our abandoned children in Shishu Bhavan all over the world. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life, the love of a mother, and the warmth of a home. We pray that every unborn child will be allowed to live and grow into the beautiful person you have created us to be. Let us pray to the Lord. A pencil offered by Sister Monica, Regional Superior of West Bengal. Father, we offer you this pencil symbolizing our, your work through the hands of Mother Teresa. We thank you for the wonders you have worked in and through her, the millions of lives you have touched. We pray that Sister Nirmala and every missionary of charity may realize that we are but instruments in the hands of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Water offered by Rinku, a woman released from prison. Every human being thirsts not just for water, but for love and freedom. Because we have been created as free people. May your presence, love and compassion give us a heart that understands, that hopes that loves. Let us pray to the Lord. Wine offered by Jagdish, a leprosy patient. Lord, with this wine made of crushed grapes, we offer you the pain and suffering of our poor, sick and dying lepers. May each of us be your instruments of compassion as we labor to bring healing and love to their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Bread offered by Lal, a handicapped and deaf person. Lord, through this bread which we offer, may we always remember to accord due respect to the handicapped. Feed the hungry 
not just with food, but with human dignity. May we recognize you in the Eucharist and in the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Chalice offered by our Superior General, Sister Nirmala. With this empty chalice, Lord, we offer you the emptiness of our hearts. Deprived of our beloved mother's physical presence among us, fill us all with the fullness of mother's spirit so that we may live her vision that recognizes the preciousness of human life. Like her, may we spend our lives in loving and serving God in each other. You did it to me. back as we continue the funeral procession we continue to have some difficulties uh, with the television uh, picture and also the sound from Natasha Stadium where uh, Mother Teresa's funeral mass is being celebrated. I'm joined by Mother Bill Petrie, Sean Callahan and John Arana who are here with us. They all knew her well and uh, we have all been watching with rapt interest as this has unfolded here today. Uh, we talked earlier about whether or not she would feel a little embarrassed by all of this, whether this is such a grand uh, departure for her, in a matter of speaking, uh, a state funeral, funeral mass presided over by a personal representative of, of the Holy Father, uh, dignitaries from around the world, television coverage. What do you think? Uh, she would feel uncomfortable 
with getting so much uh, emphasis on her life and on the person. But in her humility, she would do anything if it would help the poor. And that, that would be the justification for this, that her message, her life, uh, is going to touch people's lives, make them think, and the poor are going to be helped because of this. But uh, were there no funeral plans for her? She had been not well for the last year or so. Death was such an important part of her mission. She thought about it and talked about the importance of dignity, the dignity of death, the, uh, the, the greeting of God, uh, the importance of feeling loved at the time of death. Did she have no role, no voice at all in how she would have her own funeral and um, die? A few years ago, a piece of property at uh, St. John's Cemetery was purchased so that uh, the sisters could have their own plot. And um, many thought, including mother, that maybe that's where she would be buried. So those are the only formalities of a preparation that I knew before this. She was actually more concerned about not being in a hospital or away from the people she loved at the time of her death. She really asked that she be in the mother house with her family surrounding her. And God blessed her and, and allowed her to have that gift to be with the people that she was close to and loved at that time. Some people are going to be struck by the fact that we have a kind of all-male commentary going on here today. Uh, and what uh, Mother Teresa did for, for so many women of faith, not just Catholic faith, but she elevated them, if you will, and the whole missionary concept, didn't she? Uh, made them almost equal. M Mother was an empowerer, and uh, she had great power herself and then empowered those women around her. And, you know, you hear critiques and criticisms about feminism or, or not, but Mother was one who advocated for women and had women stand up. She really um, espoused the role of the woman in the family, and one of her, her great um, labors was to recognize the importance of the family and the role of the woman within the family because she saw that as the unity of life and really the service to community and family was from the mother and the gift of the family. What does she mean to Indian women? Because so many Indian women in the traditional faiths of this country are expected to take not just a secondary role but a far distant role from their husbands. Did she empower them in some way, Father Narana? The very concept we call it mother, though it must have come because she was a Loreto nun. But Bengalis, and especially in India, we call her Ma. Ma means mother. Right. It's not because she was mother that was translated into Ma, but we felt that she was really a mother to all of us. And she went, if you can see, all along the roadside, the word being used, Ma. And I think she really brought and gave a dignity to women and shows that how, if a woman, in unconditional love, she surrenders herself what she can do, uh, not only to a nation, but even in a family. So that way, there are a lot of broken families that have come together where she has been able to give the meaning of life and the role of a woman in the uh, time. Uh, when she was on a mission, whether she was in the White House in the United States or visiting uh, the halls of power in any of the Western European capitals, or for that matter, matter anywhere in, in the East, uh, she had a brusque directness about her. She didn't like all of that personal attention, the kind of adulation that came naturally to her. She uh, would do it and she would move on. Soon as the official function was over, she'd be back at the house of her sisters. There would either be children or elderly or a clinic and she'd be part of that. We, uh, as we watch pictures of her now in her lifetime, greeting the poor and dealing with the afflicted, she was expanding, really, to the mission, wasn't she? Uh, Sister Nirmala, who will succeed her. Do I have that name? Sister Nirmala. Nirmala, right. Uh, Nirmala, who will succeed her, has talked about going into China. Yes. I was just in China and in Outer Mongolia uh, this past summer, and I was struck by the fact that those are the ripe new fields for missionary work, it seems to me. There were lots of Christian missionaries and others who were there. Uh, I had gone into China in 1993 and 94 with Mother. We're going to look at the mass here now. Uh, we've regained the picture. They've just completed the consecration, and we're now in the Eucharistic prayer. Thank you for coming.
come, King of Mercy, to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're back now. We're in the middle of the Eucharistic uh, prayer. We're getting ready for the rites of communion here. Um, who will be allowed to take communion in this funeral mass? Do you know, Father Narana? Who will be allowed to take communion in this funeral mass? According to the program, it's given only the sisters over there and the two and the consulates, main consulate, ten and the two hundred priests. And though there will be a sizable Catholic population, maybe due to because of security reasons or maybe difficult to explain, so the communion will not be distributed to the faithful. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles.